In this video, I will be talking about the operational errors of the marine radar as well as the performance standards expected of the equipment. So on many occasions, echoes uh, which are known as false echoes appear and hence tracks appear on the radar screen which are simply not there. These are known as false echoes and these can be summarized into five types. Indirect echoes, side lobe echoes, multiple echoes, interference echoes and second trace returns. We'll start with indirect echoes which are caused by obstructions which are in the path of the radar beam. The area behind the scanner is obscured from the radar beam by a funnel can cause indirect echoes. Immediately behind the scanner, the radar can, be, can see nothing and this is known as a blind arc. Either side of the blind arc, there are shadow sectors where only a portion of the radar energy will get through and weak echoes will probably not be detected. In a blind sector, no targets would be detected. If the obstruction can reflect a radar pulse, it is possible for the scanner to transmit a pulse and reflect that pulse of the obstruction when it could then hit a target. This is shown on the screen right now. The target would reflect the pulse and the resultant echo could travel back, hit the obstruction and then be reflected back into the scanner. The echo from the target would arrive indirectly via the obstruction and hence a target would appear in the direction of the scanner that is in the shadow sector or blind arc. Upon installation of the radar, it is very important that the shadow sectors and blind arcs be identified so that operators are aware of the limitations of the radar in these C areas. The indirect false echo is caused by the obstruction which in turn creates the shadow sector. The shadow sector starts acting as a mirror to bounce the radar beam both out and back. The indirect echo will appear in the area of the shadow sector or blind arc and will be roughly the correct range but at an incorrect bearing. The shadow sector can be checked using C clutter or using a small target at close range and swinging the vessel around and noting that the sector that the target disappears and reappears. On installation, shadow sectors and blind arcs are identified and clearly displayed as a sketch or drawing. Multiple echoes are caused by two reflecting surfaces bouncing a radar pulse backwards and forwards between the targets and then eventually being received at the scanner location. This can happen several times to produce a series of echoes on the screen all leading away from the correct echoes. Thus the echoes all appear on the same bearing but different ranges. It could occur when two large ships are passing very close to one another and the two actual echoes would appear on the screen with a series of multiples on a constant bearing behind them as you would see in this next slide. All the multiple targets would be weaker echoes and get progressively weaker as the range increased away from the scanner location. Side lobe echoes 
as well as the main beam, the radar produces a number of weaker beams on either side called side lobes. Normally these beams do not cause a problem as the transmitted energy from them is very weak. However, when very strong targets are close to the antenna locations, echoes can be detected from these side beams. The strongest echo is the actual target and either side of the main echo are side echoes which have the same range but are progressively weaker as the bearing increases or decreases from the actual target. This is shown now on the screen. Radar interference is caused by the radar picking up the pulses of other radars operating in the vicinity using a similar transmission frequency and similar pulse repetition frequency. This can cause a spiraling pattern of echoes on the display which can interfere with the detection of wanted targets. On your screen you can see an example of the radar to radar interference which causes the concept of spoking. That's the pattern that you see on the radar screen. Second trace echoes. Second trace echoes has been, it has already been mentioned that the condition called a ducted can result in echoes returning from considerable distances. These echoes will appear at the correct bearing but at much lower ranges than the true distance. What can happen is that an echo from the first pulse can arrive back at the scanner after the transmission of the second pulse. So you can see this is the second pulse going from the scanner. The echo from the first pulse is received back by the scanner. Finally, we come back, we come to the radar performance standards. In terms of radar performance standards, they are governed by the IMO resolution, of course. Uh, some of examples of the radar performance standards is there should be at least two radars on vessels of over 10,000 cross tonnage, out of which one radar must be a three centimeter radar. The range measurement or fixed range rings and variable range markers should be at least 1% of maximum range scale in use or 30 meters, whichever is greater. Bearing accuracy should be at least plus or minus one degree of an, on an echo on the edge of the display. The range accuracy should be plus minus 1% of the maximum range scale in use or 30 meters. Greater value applies here. The heading marker should be at about accuracy should be about plus to minus 1 degree. The heading marker off switch must revert to on status. The radars must be gyro stabilized. The equipment must be operated satisfactorily in wind speeds up to 100 knots. It must be fitted with a performance monitor. Uh, on ships over 1600 gross tonnage constructed after 1984, 1st September 1984 must be fitted with a facility for plotting targets at least as effective as a reflection plotter. The bearing discrimination on a 1 and 1.5 nautical mile range scale should be about 2.5 degrees for targets on the outer half of the display and the range discrimination on 1.5 nautical mile range scale should be about 40 meters for target on the outer half of the display. I think this is pretty much it. Uh, you can go and download the uh, IMO performance standards or IMO resolution for the performance standards for radar uh, from the web and read more about it. There are a lot many points as well. For example, uh, the radar should be able to start up from a cold to fully operational within four minutes, uh, from standby to fully operational condition within 15 seconds. Uh, three centimeters radar must be able to detect and uh, display the signals uh, obtained from the search and rescue radar transponders, SARTs. Um, 
then parallel index lines at least minimum of two independent lines should be available so it goes on there are many other things as well i don't want to go into each of it because it becomes too long but uh, like i said please go down and uh, please go and download the latest performance standards uh, before you go for any examination and read upon it because sometimes there could be some minor changes in it otherwise uh, what i have told you is good enough for you to know for your exams thanks guys bye